Hello everyone, welcome to my fifth video. This is Rex Gavin. In this video, I will be um, discussing how to sketch the graph of a hyperbola. So we have to sketch the graph of the hyperbola given the equation x minus 3 quantity squared all over 9 minus y plus 1 quantity squared all over 16 equals 1. So first is we have to identify the position of the transverse axis and the conjugate axis. And based on the previous discussions that we have done, we have to identify first a squared. In this equation given, this term here is the positive term, which means 9 is a squared. And notice that the variable in the numerator is x. So, we have to recall the position of the x-axis, which is horizontal. We can therefore say that the position of the transverse axis is horizontal and the conjugate axis is vertical because they are always perpendicular to each other. After which, we have to identify the center of this hyperbola. We have to take h and then k. That means the center of this is 3 and negative 1. The value of a squared is equal to 9. Therefore, a is equal to 3. Our b squared is 16. So, b is equal to 4. Recall c that is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Substituting the values of a squared and b squared, then you have the square root of 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 25, and so c is equal to 5. d is equal to a squared plus c, all over c, I mean. So we have d equals 9 over 5, or 1.8 in decimal form. The lattice rectum is equal to 2b squared all over a. When we substitute the values, that should be 2 times 16 all over 3, or 32 over 3, which is approximately 10 times 67. Guys, after getting all of this, it is important for you to know how to use them. So let's proceed to the sketching of the graph. Okay, this is the given equation. The center is there, and then... We found out that, it, that the transverse axis is horizontal and the conjugate axis is vertical. The value of a is 3, the value of b is 4, c is 5, d is 9 over 5, and the lattice rectum is 32 over 3. In case, guys, the value is um, a fraction or rational expression, it would be easier if we will convert it into a decimal form because we will do it manually on a graphing paper or in any paper that we have. Given this um, rectangular coordinate system on the screen, we have the x-axis, the horizontal line, and the y-axis, the vertical line. First is to locate the center, which is 3 and negative 1, so that should be a point a line at 3 of the x-axis and negative 1 of the y-axis. Let's label it as, as C, or the first letter of the word center. Remember guys that the transverse axis measures 2a and we have the value of a here which is 3. So since we need 2a and we only have a, then we will consider a as half of the transverse axis or this should be the distance from the center going to a vertex. So, so from the center that we have, all we have to do is to count 3 units left and right, okay? left and right because we need a horizontal transverse axis as in this one okay so from the center you count one two three units going right and that is our first vertex you also need to count three units going left okay so actually that's the point right there the third unit and that is our vertex two so the line segment segment v1 to v2 is our transverse axis and notice I tell you it is equivalent to 2a our 2a our 2a here is 6 right and remember from C to V1 is 3 and from C to V2 is also 3 adding them 
makes it 6. Okay, so that is our full transverse axis. Now, for the conjugate axis, we have to remember that it measures 2B, and we have B there as 4. Okay, and it's vertical, right? Because they are always perpendicular to the transverse axis. So we have to count vertically 4 units. That means 4 units up and 4 units downwards. So that's 1, 2, 3, and then 4. That means that is our co vertex 1. And we also need to count 4 units downwards. So that should be our co vertex 2. The line segment co vertex 1 to co vertex 2 is our conjugate axis. As I said, the conjugate axis and the transverse axis are always perpendicular to each other. After that one, guys, we need to draw the auxiliary rectangle. Okay? So always remember, the sides will always pass through the vertices and the co-vertices of our hyperbola. After that, we need, we need to take the non-adjacent vertices of our, and no, sorry, not vertices, the non-adjacent corners of our auxiliary rectangle. And then, we can draw already our asymptote. Okay, so let's label that one as A sub 1 or the asymptote 1. Take the other non-adjacent corners of the auxiliary rectangle and draw the second asymptote. So let's label that one as our A sub 2. Now after the asymptotes, we can then find the foci of our hyperbola. We have the value of C which is 5. And remember, the distance between the foci of our hyperbola is 2C. So C, which is 5, is just half of the distance. So that's from the center to focus 1 and the center to focus 2. Always remember also, guys, that the vertices and the foci are always aligned. And since V1 and V2 are aligned at the center horizontally, then foci as well will be aligned at the center horizontally. So we need to count 5 units right and 5 units left. From the center then, remember from the center to V1 is 3, we can just add 2 units to make it 5. So from here 3, we have 4 and then 5. So that is our focus one in here and then we can label that one as F1. On the left as well, just do the same. So this is already 3 units from the center. So that should be 4 and then 5. So this is our focus 2 and this is our F2. Okay? So just don't forget that foci are always aligned with the vertices of our hyperbola. After this will be the directrices of our hyperbola. We will be using the value of D, which is 9 over 5, or 1.8 in decimal. I know that this will not be as easy as the whole numbers, but these fractions and decimals are really manageable. Okay, So just trust the process. What will we do here is we need to start from the center, going 1.8 right and left. Okay, Why should I, I go right and left? It's because I need to find the directrices and they are always parallel, okay? They are always parallel to the conjugate axis. So in order for them to be parallel, I need to go right and left because if I will be doing it up and down, then they will be intersecting, okay? So the logic is I need to go right and left. And... It should be 1.8 units right and left. So from the center, there should be 1 here and then 2. But then I only need 0.8, so I should, I, should, um, I should go back a little, at least maybe here. Okay. So you can just put a point there. And then after that, we need to make a straight line out of it. So notice that the line is already parallel to the conjugate axis. Now for the second directrix, okay, anyway, this, let's label that one as D1. For the second directrix, we need to go left, the same distance 1.8. So from the center, 
this is 1 here, and then 2, but then we only need 0.8 or 1.8, so we need to go back a little again. So maybe somewhere here, um, we can put a point there, and then draw our second directrix. So that's it. That's our B sub 2. Okay? I hope that's clear to you. If not, then you may replay the video as many times as you want. We are actually almost done. We are now to find the lateral recta of our hyperbola. We, also, we already have the length of each lattice rectum, which is 32 over 3, or approximately 10.67. But then people, we will start counting from the focus of our hyperbola, moving upwards and downwards, to get the whole lattice rectum. So basically, we will only need half of its length in order to do that. We will divide the value of the lattice rectum 32 over 3 which is equal to 16 over 3 or approximately 5.33 okay so all you have to do is divide 32 over 3 by 2 you may use a calculator to make it fast and easy then you have 16 over 3 which is approximately 5.33 that means from the focus of our hyperbola here we will be counting 5.33 units okay 5.33 units up and down. Anyway, you also need to remember that the, the lattice rectum or the latera recta, the directrices, and the conjugate axis are parallel. Okay, they are always parallel. Only the um, the horizontal, the transverse axis is different because it will always be um, perpendicular to the conjugate axis, but the rest of the lines are are already parallel to the conjugate axis so 5.33 units that means from the focus people there should be one unit up two units three and then four and then five we need to add 0.33 so that should be a small distance okay so let's let's maybe point. and we will label that one as our r1 that means the first end point of our lattice rectum okay this line segment is just half of the lattice rectum we need the other half down okay we need the other half down which means we also need 5.33 units from the focus so you can just count 5.33 okay going here so maybe it's just somewhere in, because this is one two three and then four here five align with negative six and then a little okay so we can just put a point somewhere there and then in my case I label this point as R3 okay if you may ask why not R2 sir it's because I reserve I reserve R2 for the point in here okay because when I label I label the endpoints I always label um, the sequence R1234 starting the upper right and then the upper left and then before I go I go downwards okay so this is my R1 so I reserve this point here as my R2 so this is my R3 but actually it's up to you it's up to you okay now the line segment from F1 to R3 is another half of the lattice rectum which means the R1 R3 line segment is our lattice rectum and then on the other side it's actually easier this time because we already have R1 here just use this point okay, just use this point align it there on the other side so maybe you can just use that as the other point and that is our R2 so R2 F2 line segment is half of the lattice rectum on the other side and then use R3 to get the last end point so somewhere here maybe somewhere here so we can just get a point in there and then label that one as R4 so we completed the other lattice rectum we already had or we already have sorry we already have the two lateral recta the last part is so exciting we are now to draw the curves what do we do use the vertex one connect it to R1 using a curve okay you see um, as in this one so that's a curve moving upwards 
And then always remember also, just be careful in drawing the curves. Do not make the curves avoid, like it, others will be drawing this, like avoiding the asymptotes. Others will be doing this path. Okay, it's not right. Because remember, this is an asymptote, which means the curves will be getting closer and closer to it. So basically, the hyperbola will be getting closer and closer to this line in the long run. So all you have to do is to draw curve and then of which the, the curve will be getting closer and closer to the asymptote. Same on the other side. So here, uh, you can start going down to make it easy and then you have there. That is our half of the hyperbola. On the other side, just do the same. Connect V2 and R2, moving up. Okay, so also from V2 to R4. So that's our hyperbola. That's it. Goodbye.